The purpose of this show, the of this show is to guide you to realign, you to realign with habits that get you to live the life, live the life you've always dreamed of. Life. This this is the Habit Based Lifestyle Podcast with Jesse Yule. This is the Habit Based Lifestyle where you can access your full potential right now. Finally break free from destructive habits. That dream life, if you want it, you can have it. This is where you transform your health, mind, business, and relationships. Or do nothing and keep your life the way it is. But if you're ready for change, you're in the right place. This is where you're gonna learn how to live a habit based lifestyle. You, you, you are tuning in to the Habit Based Lifestyle Podcast with, with, with your host, Jesse Yule. This is this is the habit-based lifestyle let's go many times over the last few weeks i've had several questions come up about marriage boot camp and then several questions come up about habits and instead of answering them uh, right away i want to and i wanted to start creating uh, one podcast every month where i take a lot of the questions that I have throughout the month and just begin to answer them uh, in the episode so people can tune in and they can listen to this. And I also realize that a lot of times when people ask questions, you know, other people may have the same question, but they just uh, don't, you know, don't ask it or, or maybe don't have the platform to do that. And so I wanted to create one episode every single month that is called Q&A where we just go through all of the questions and we answer those or I answer those. And um, just so you guys know, the framework of this is, you know, you can ask questions on fitness, nutrition, uh, spirituality, uh, many of the habits that I'm doing, uh, stuff around relationships. I have several uh, for marriage boot camp, and then also any type of business conversation around sales, marketing systems. Um, some of the questions today have a very broad uh, subject line, but I also want to give you some type of range uh, as a coach also that it's not like, hey, I'm just some fitness guy or, hey, I just know about nutrition. Like there's a lot of stuff um, that I've had an opportunity to learn over the last you know, 20 some years. And so I want to offer that as a resource uh, for you guys also. So let's get into this episode. So Craig H, um, he wants to know some effective ways of having regular spiritual interaction with his family. So Craig, one of the things that, that I've realized is I have to give my kids or my family some type of framework so that they can begin to explore spirituality uh, in a sense themselves. So maybe uh, things like teaching them how to meditate and just connect uh, to themselves. If you're talking about just interacting with the family is maybe just doing a, um, you know, a lot of times I think, you know, growing up for me, we prayed at times before dinner. Uh, but I think one of the cool things that we can do is as a, family is whether it's prayer, whether it's meditation, it's just doing it as a family and doing it as like a normal practice as a family and just allowing each other the space to be able to do that, explore it, but also to have conversation around it that sometimes, you know, whether you believe in, in prayer or you believe in meditation, just inviting that into your home and opening the doors up for your family to begin to do that. If it's something that you're really passionate about, like I always think the stuff that I'm super passionate about, my kids and my family will also be passionate about if I bring that home and make it fun for them to learn. And so, you know, if you want to have spiritual interaction with your family, um, a great way to begin to do this is just to offer up some prayer and meditation uh, even before dinner. Um, or some type of spiritual practice that you're doing consistently where your family can like kind of lean into it. And that even I think of like meditation, I think of like uh, embodiment practice, things where you're actually kind of doing like a body scan, which is kind of fun for kids. Uh, I've done this with my kids. Even them really seeing me meditate makes them want to do it because they're like, dad, what are you doing? 
um, there's all, there's all kinds of different meditations like guided there's, you know, just sitting in silence, sometimes just being like, Hey, we're going to have some quiet time as a family could be a spiritual interaction or maybe even going for a walk in nature together as a family. But I think the biggest thing when it comes to spiritual interaction with your family is just finding something that you're consistent with and then finding something that you also get them the chance to explore as a family and find out what works best. Uh, so we have Andrew. Uh, he's actually asking, uh, finding and seeing my value within me, not just what others have told me over the years. Um, theirs may or may not be true. However, I will find more power in who I believe myself to be. Um, you know, and then the other part, I asked him a little bit deeper, like, can you explain this? He said that was a question around how you have been able to see your value within, which I figure you figured out, figured, but that's why it's clear. So uh, what I hear you saying is, you know, do I see the value? How do I see the value in myself that others have told me they see in me? You know, this, this was something that I struggled with for a long time. You know, the reason why is I often didn't see the value in me that others saw in me. Uh, a huge breakthrough for me was when I began to see more value in myself than others seen in me. Um, I also think we're the most critical of ourselves. And so, you know, when we, we often judge ourselves in ways that others may not, we often criticize ourselves and others in ways that others won't do that. Um, sometimes because others are afraid to hurt our feelings, other times because we're more critical of ourselves than anyone else. But here's what I'll tell you. By putting yourself out there, by putting myself out there, uh, one of the things that I began to realize is I built up a resistance to my own criticism. Oftentimes I would criticize you know, myself the most when I didn't actually put myself out there. And so when I started putting myself out there more and challenging myself out of my comfort zone, I started to see this power shift or this power change inside of me and who I believe myself to be. And so if you're struggling with this, maybe the first place that you may want to ask yourself is what value do you actually want to see in you? And you know, what's the, the quickest path to you seeing that? And sometimes I think, you know, maybe you don't see the value in you, but what would it take for you to actually begin to see the value in you the same way that others do? And so sometimes just reframing that question gets you to start looking at yourself differently. What would you have to do differently? How would you have to show up daily differently than what you're currently doing for you to begin to see the value in yourself? That is a way that we can begin to open up that conversation with ourselves. because you're right. If I don't see the value in me, you know, no matter what people say, I'll still go back to the value that I can see in myself. So, um, I hope that helps, uh, Travis, uh, this is a question around marriage. Uh, Travis should both of us be working and bringing in an income to build the empire or should wife stay at home and focus on being a mother? Uh, so first of all, you know, a wife staying at home, uh, I'm going to challenge you to stop saying being a mother. I'm going to challenge you to start saying a CEO mom because, uh, a mom has to start taking ownership that taking care of the kids and staying at home is not a stay at home mom. It's a CEO mom. And so a CEO mom means she is the chief executive officer of being a mom. And this is a very important role at home because think about it, you know, there's so much to do at home. There's so much that goes into, you know, watching kids and taking care of your kids. It is a 24 seven job. It is the only job that's actually 24 seven. There's a couple ways that I think of this. I have friends where both the, the mom or the wife and the husband both work. Uh, and it works for them at building an empire. I have other ways um, where me and my wife, for the most part, she has been a CEO mom, uh, but she's also helped me in my business. And part of the thing it often does is it helps leverage my time and my ability to create 
as an entrepreneur and build an empire with her side by side, not her in the background taking care of the kids. And so I I really want to challenge your idea of this is your wife may be a CEO mom and she may not directly be bringing in money, but she's supporting your cause of building the empire together. So she's not behind you. She's not out in front of you. You're not out in front of her. She is right beside you building an empire together. Does she need to bring an income home? That depends. Figure out what she may be wanting to do. Like, I think it, it depends on each couple. I don't think there's a, there's a correct answer, but I would say this, you know, it, ask your wife, is she passionate about what she's doing as a CEO mom, or is she more passionate about maybe going out into the workforce? And does that mean more to her at that part of her career? Cause I think in different cases, some moms really do want to be the CEO mom, other moms, they want to work and that's okay. But I think as men, we have to recognize what our wives actually want to do. We have to support them in that. And we have to really find out, does she want to stay home with the kids and help raise them? Or does she uh, want to be out in the workforce and us kind of doing all this together? But I think either way you have to look at it is you're going to have to get clear on what it is that your wife wants and what you want and what you guys want as a couple before you make that decision. Because if you know, maybe your wife doesn't want to be a CEO mom, or maybe a, a woman doesn't. And if you're pushing her to be that stay at home mom, there's going to be a lot of conflict in that. So just make sure that you're asking yourself, you're asking your wife the question. Um, because here's what I know guys that both sides are working in the workforce, they're going to tell you, Hey, your wife needs to produce. She needs to come home. And then on my case, my wife has helped me build two businesses. She, you know, did a lot of the back end stuff that I did not want to do. And she was very good at it. And so she supported me, but we work side by side, even to marriage boot camp. we're working side by side, but yes, she is a CEO mom and she's very good at it. And so, um, you know, I, I had to also find out, Hey, what do you actually want to do? And she's like, well, I want to be a CEO mom. And I'm like, okay, cool. How can I support you in that? And she's supporting me and we're supporting each other by building, uh, this marriage boot camp together. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, Ben, why is it so easy to break some habits, but others seem so deeply rooted? I guess, uh, the way that we look at it is, a habit that's easy to break uh, may not all be, may not be that big of a habit, um, but when others are deeply rooted, oftentimes we have maybe we've had this habit much longer. Uh, maybe this habit is a form of sedation, uh, and so it's actually getting rid of a feeling or emotion that we have, and maybe it's a habit that we have had for years. Uh, and longer. And so I always think of um, back when I quit chewing was uh, I got to this place where I, I kind of realized that, you know, every time that I took a chew, I was actually lying to myself. I was lying to the person in front of me. But the easiest thing to do to get rid of that lie or to get rid of that feeling of being a liar was to take a chew. And once I realized this was happening, Um, I began to kind of go through, okay, well, what's, what's getting triggered? What's happening? How do I shift this or how do I change this? And I realized that if I just simply did, you know, 10 pushups, 20 pushups, uh, it helped me associate with this new habit. Uh, and it helped me get rid of this old habit. Like this was a 26 year habit. So don't act like this wasn't deeply rooted. It goes, went all the way back to like 14 years old. Not only that, it's one of the most addictive things that you can drink over caffeine, anything else. Nicotine is one of the hardest things that you can stop. So as I was doing this, I realized I was addicted to lying, chewing, got rid of the feeling that I got when I lied. 
And so it suppressed it. And as I suppressed it, I could trace it back into, okay, uh, I could also suppress it by doing push-ups. And as I started doing push-ups, I realized that all I was looking for was just something to change the way I felt. That's a way that I began to stop it. And yes, it was deeply rooted, but I could take a 26 year habit deeply rooted to where I was doing a can a day and stop it within three weeks by just retracing the habit back to it started. So regardless, I still got triggered, um, but how I responded in that trigger um, is I started doing push-ups. I also move my can of chew from where I normally would keep it, whether it was in my pocket or in this certain part of my desk. And then how I showed up in that was different. I started doing push-ups instead of taking a chew. Then my reward was much different at the end. I'm like, I don't even need one anymore. Their hard, habits are hard to break when they're deeper rooted, but we also have to dig them up at the root instead of digging them up at the surface. It's no different than a plant. You know, I remember when my parents used to say, hey, go weed the garden and you'd start pulling out weeds and you would just break off the stuff on the ground. Uh, like two days later, they would grow back and it didn't even look like you weeded. So you really, in order to weed out these habits, you have to dig them up at the root. Otherwise, they'll just keep coming back more and more. And I think that's where most people get mixed up is find the root of the problem and then begin to dig it out and it goes away much more. But if we keep playing around with everything above the surface, then we just keep reintroducing that habit back into ourselves and it's very hard for us to do that. So uh, another question from Ed, uh, he says, can you explain uh, what marriage boot camp is? And uh, let me just give you kind of a short answer. Marriage boot camps uh, puts couples it's a two-day immersion. It puts couples through a series of exercises and experiences in a specific order uh, in adding specific types of stress to determine what is causing the problems in your marriage. So we go through a series of exercises. We go through a series of experiential um, you know, learnings, and we find out where the problems come up in your marriage. Like think about this, anytime you add some stress, you add a different environment, you change some things up, it causes a trigger in your marriage and triggers a behavior, a pattern that we see come up. And it's a place that you go to, to be safe and survive in that place. And so we bring that out, we, we get the emotions up and then we choose something different in that place and we kind of reprogram your mind, your brain, your energy, your feelings to just walk through that. And so a lot of what this is, is, is you know, it's a very intimate setting uh, with five couples and you're going through these experiences and exercises together. So different things come up, but the biggest thing is, is you get to see the problem at the problem level instead of seeing it at the surface level. The other question is this, is marriage boot camp like couples therapy? And you know, here's what I'll say is, uh, we have done couples therapy, uh, me and Katie before and, and couples counseling. Uh, but here's what I'll say, marriage boot camp is unlike traditional couples therapy. You won't be sitting through lectures, you won't be sitting through boring talks, you won't be sitting at all. Uh, you will be actively participating with your spouse. I believe the best way to learn is to be in an experience um, and be in this experience in this environment where you are interacting with your spouse. You're creating the atmosphere. We, we have the framework of what's actually happening, but inside of that, you're operating and you're experiencing at the same time. And so you don't get bored. You don't feel like you're being lectured. You don't feel like you're being told what to do. All the problems come up. Everything kind of comes up on its own. And then you get to choose how you work through that. So um, it is not a traditional, you know, therapy. It is not traditional where you sit down in front of a room and everybody stares at you. Somebody else said, what results can I expect to get out of the two days? And I'm, you know, marriage boot camp really breaks the cycle that has kept your marriage uh, at a standstill or maybe in the same place for years. 
uh, Marriage Bootcamp will also teach you how to connect on a physical level, a mental level, intimate level, and spiritual level. And some of these levels are, are really the first group we had. These are levels of intimacy that couples had never really felt outside of maybe their wedding day. And most of them said, man, I feel way more connected spiritually, intimately, and, and just on a deeper level than I ever felt even when we got married. Um, it's also fun. It's very hands-on. It's very fast paced. It's very interactive. Um, it's very, uh, emotional where you'll have emotional swings of like happiness, all these things come up laughing. And then all of a sudden, uh, you may have something that comes up that's emotional in a different way. So, Um, But this is really about optimizing your health, your lifestyle, your relationship, your environment and co-creating wealth or whatever you choose inside of this. Like I think of the real purpose of marriage is to co-create. It's for you guys to begin to create uh, relationships, to create wealth, to create spirituality together as a couple. And it is a customized group experience. Like I said, it's only five couples. So when you're going through this, it's very intimate. We have a 14 day lead up that people begin to experience breakthrough immediately. So it's not just the two days. There's also a 14 day lead up that is just as powerful uh, with the couples. So I hope that uh, answers your question. So uh, before we sign off, just want to tell you guys, thank you. Uh, once a month, I will be doing this Q&A. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me, email them, uh, private message me. If you don't want your name on them, great. Uh, but I look forward to being able to connect with you and answer these questions and free to listen to the episode. If you guys are looking to connect further with a group of like-minded people, join myself, so many others in the Habit-Based Lifestyle Secrets group on Facebook where I'll be dropping daily habits to help you live to your full potential. If you want to be one of our next case studies and begin living this habit-based lifestyle, maybe have questions, comments, requests, feel free to contact me, jesse at habitbasedlifestyle.com. Until next episode, have an awesome day. The purpose of this show show. is to guide you to realign realign. with habits that get you to live the life life. you've always dreamed of. This, this is the Habit-Based Lifestyle Podcast with Jesse.